Well, it's a really quite surreal trip, uh, given that uh, India is in the throes of violence right now. Uh, but for Mr. Trump, uh, you know, he does have a large uh, population of Indians in the U.S., and this can be seen as a pre-election rally of sorts. Uh, if you recall back from Mr. Modi's rally in uh, Texas a few months ago, uh, that uh, also had a number of uh, U.S. politicians from both parties who were also coming up for re-election. Some of them were contesting in the Democratic primary, uh, who also basically now, you know, who had come and accompanied Mr. Modi on on, on the stage in, in, in Houston. So these days, obviously, election campaigns are fought in a, on a transnational footing. And uh, I think that is primarily the uh, significance that this has for Mr. Trump. Uh, Mr. Modi and Mr. Trump are mutually reinforcing strong, strong man type of leaders. Uh, Mr. Modi's own image at the moment, despite the fact that he came back with a very large majority, uh, has taken a beating in the last couple of months, given the large demonstrations all across India against the Citizenship Amendment Act. So these, this is basically uh, for sort of an optical illusion, if you want to call it that, of uh, two large, uh, two strongmen, uh, you know, leaders who are playing to their base, which is also the reason why this was not held in the national capital, but in Mr. Modi's state of Gujarat, where he would be more able to control the numbers of people who would attend and the kinds of people who, who would attend the rally. Subi, as you said there, it's all about optics, but we are unlikely to see a major trade deal being signed off during this flying visit by Donald Trump, aren't we? That is correct. And uh, I think that the, there are uh, strong pressures for the U.S. to maintain its uh, tariffs against India. This is an election year, uh, uh, despite the fact that uh, Indians, uh, especially Hindus, in the U.S. have moved in the recent years towards the Republican Party. Uh, the strong element of the hardline conservatives of the Republican Party would not like to see further exceptions made for India. And in a kind of uh, slate of hand, when Mr. Trump uh, announced that India was no longer de uh, a developing country, but in fact a developed country, what that basically implied was that any kind of exemptions that were in place for developing countries would no longer be uh, available for India to, to enjoy. And so, yes, I do not that there is a trade deal coming out of these talks, yes. And again, we've seen effectively what you could call campaign-style rallies being held for these men. What is the electoral significance? I mean, you've touched on that previously, but, you know, for both their leaders' support base, both in India and back in the States? Well, see, Mr. Uh, Modi is no longer facing any uh, upcoming elections for the next several months. So, I mean, for Mr. Modi, this is this is not really of any electoral significance, except uh, it is of an image-making significance. He can show to his base that he's a leader of international stature. Uh, for Mr. Trump, there is a significance here because, as I said, over the last uh, five or eight years, uh, large numbers of Indians have basically become uh, supporters of the Republican Party. Mr. Trump enjoys very high approval rating within India. So the Pew Research uh, numbers show that 56% of Indians approve of Mr. Trump uh, and his foreign policy and think of him as a strong friend of India. This, just like in the case of Mr. Boris Johnson and the British elections, uh, a lot of these optics are going to be used for the election campaign. Uh, there's a very strong Republican, Indian Republicans for Trump organization in the U.S., which in the last election for Mr. Trump had raised, uh, you know, millions of dollars. And there's a fanatic uh, element within Mr. Modi's uh, sort of support base, which actually worships Mr. Trump as God. So we have two or three temples which are now built for him. And I believe that they have been on 24-hour uh, relay worshipping of a Trump statue in two Indian cities. And that is extraordinary, uh, Subir Sinha. Um, thank you very much for that. We're going to have to leave it there. That's Subir Sinha Thanks. from SOAS in London.